Hello, and welcome back to the Stirling Aircraft Project, Episode 2. In today's episode, we're going to be delving a little deeper into the Bombay. Specifically, the forward section of Bombay that we're trying to recreate at the project at the moment. The Bombay of the Stirling was incredibly complex, over-engineered, and, as you'll come to see, very tricky to recreate. We're going to be looking a little bit deeper into the techniques that Shorts used to make this, and why it's such a task for us to try and recreate today. The bomb frames that you see here are in their most basic form, and the process we're going to be following today is building them up into an assembly. John is creating a flange by knocking the metal around a wooden former to create the basic shape of one of our frames. This is a CAD model of what a finished bomb frame assembly looks like. The key thing to note here is that on this one assembly there's a hell of a lot of joggles. Now, many of you may, may be thinking, what's a joggle? Joggling is a sheet metal terminology for creating a bend in the metal to help create a flush surface. Joggling, especially on the short sterling, was used all over the shop. As you can see here, the brackets are joggled to create space for the witch's hat to sit flush. This allows a flush surface to be maintained between the frame and the stringer. To create a joggle, one piece of metal is bent around another to form an overlap. This not only makes a strong join but allows a rivet to be used to join them together, where it couldn't be if they were just butted up end on end. The other benefit to this is that it also creates a flush line along one edge of the two pieces of metal. This is denoted by the dotted line. This is also especially helpful when you have a bomb frame that lots of pieces of metal meet. This exploded view of the bomb frame shows all of the joggled brackets and strengtheners that go into making an assembly. The completed bomb frame assembly shows you that when all these pieces are riveted to the frame, it gives us lots of space to join these together using a keel. And now, just in case I haven't blown your minds enough already, we're going to take a quick maths break. Now, don't worry, we're not going to be using any of the equations on the screen at the moment. We are completing the first nine frames of the Bombay section. Remembering that there are three different bomb cells per frame, that gives us a grand total of 27 frames to complete, and 648 joggles in the forward section that we're aiming to recreate. If you can work out how many joggles there'd be in the entire Bombay, from frame 6 to 36, please put it in the comments below. The keel section both joins all of the bomb frames together and separates the three individual bomb cells. One of our volunteers, Cliff, has been in charge of putting together the keel section. Here he is measuring the butt strap that joins two sections of keels together from a piece of wreckage we have. On this particular visit to the workshop, Cliff regaled me with stories of his time as a sooty. Although, since John promoted him to rigger, you can see he's rather excelling himself doing a proper trade. We're trying to recreate roughly 16 foot of the overall 42 and a half foot of Bombay. However, within that 16 foot, there are still lots of joins between the keel diaphragms. As you can see here, Cliff is creating a joggle in the material of one of the keel sections. This overlap then allows it to be joined to another keel section. Now we're going to go through the process of riveting up the bomb frame assembly. 
First, we rivet on this L section strengthener, and then we can get on to riveting up brackets. Here John is clearing the hole ready for the rivet to go in. We do this by running a drill at a slightly larger size than what the rivet actually is. This helps the rivet swell into the hole as it's reacted. Once I get my big head out the way, we'll get to putting some rivets down. When riveting, you often work in a team, one person on a reaction block and the other person on the riveting gun. It's incredibly important for both people to stay square, as that helps the rivet go down straight. Moving on to the other side of the bomb frame, we finish putting the rivets into the L section strengthener. Here are a couple of videos of the bomb frames after we'd finished riveting. One video shows the tails and the other shows the heads of the rivets. Overall this process took us about 4 or 5 hours, or one Saturday's work with plenty of tea breaks. As many of you may be aware, a lot of inspiration for this channel has come from my workplace. A lovely gentleman by the name of Neville Wilden comes in each week and records a video on the progress of how we're getting on with the restoration of Lancaster NX611. Each video comes out weekly at 6pm on a Saturday and there's over 200 videos and counting. As he did the same for me, if you get the chance please go and check out his channel as it does help the restoration of another great Bomber Command aircraft. Whilst we're on the subject of thank yous, a big thank you from the project has to go out to Armada UK for their continued support. Having cut us bomb frame blanks and many sheet metal components for the bomb bay, as well as bell crank components for the flying controls within our cockpit section. We now interrupt this broadcast with an important channel announcement. All of us here at the project would like to thank every single one of you for your support on the first episode. We're hoping to continue this going forward. However, there is something I'd like to address. The data from our first episode shows that 97.7% of you who watch the video aren't subscribers. By subscribing, you're helping the channel grow, and if you hit the notification bell, you'll be notified when a new episode comes out. Thank you for liking and sharing this video with your friends and family, as it helps to get the word out. Well, that just about wraps it up for the second episode. Thank you very much for watching, and hopefully you've learnt a little bit about joggling and the Bombay of the Sterling. As for future episodes, I'm hoping to make a new episode in this series every two to three months. Obviously that's highly dependent on what work we get done and what there is to show you guys. Things are going to be extremely busy over the next few months for us as we're moving to a new workshop space. This means work on the Bombay may take a little bit of a back seat for a while, but hopefully I'll keep you updated one way or the other. Again, thank you very much for watching, and if you have any questions, please put them in the comments and I'll try and answer them to the best of my ability.